let us look at the pathways. So always the pathways are either A friend, E friend and there will be interconnections. I will go through in brief every single part of the basal ganglia. Uh, now let us look at the most important part, the striatum or the neostriatum. It will have afferents from the cortex called as the corticostriate projections. It will have afferents from the thalamus called as the thalamostriate projections. It will have afferents from the substantia nigra, mainly the pars compacta, the dopaminergic projections which are called as the nigrostriatal projections. And it will also have afferents from the brainstem raphenuclei which are called as the raphenuclei striatal projections. So now let us look at the efferents from the striatum. This efferents will go to the paridum which are called as the striatopallidal fibers and also to the substantia nigra but now the pars reticularis. These are called as the striatonigral fibers. Now if we look at the connections of the next part of the basal ganglia that is the globus paridus. Globus paridus will receive afferents from the striatum which are called as the striatoparidal fibers. They will also receive afferents from the subthalamus which is called as the subthalamopallidal fibers. Now important point over here, these are the only excitatory fibers which will reach the globus paridus. Rest everything in the internal uh, circuits are going to be actually inhibitory, gabargic. This will be glutaminergic subthalamopallidal fibers. And it will also receive efferents from the uh, substantia nigra which are called as the nigropallidal fibers. It will give efferents to the thalamus, mainly the ventroanterior, ventrolateral, centromedian and dorsomedial nuclei which are uh, called as the globus pallido, so pallidothalamic projections. Then it will give efferents to the subthalamic nuclei, the substantia nigra, the pedunculopontine nuclei and to the brainstem where in the reticular formation, red nucleus and the inferior olivary nucleus. Now the connections of the substantia nigra, pars reticularis and pars compacta. Very important to remember over here, pars compacta only has efferents and that too directly to the striatum, the dopaminergic efferents. Pars reticularis will receive efferents from cerebral cortex, from the striatum, from the globus pallidus and from the subthalamic nuclei. It will give efferents again like globus pallidus interna, it will give efferents to the thalami the reticular formation and the superior colliculus. An important point over here to remember that pars reticularis is actually a functional counterpart of globus paridus interna. Though it is actually structurally located somewhere else in the midbrain, actually it is a functional counterpart of globus paridus interna. So it will have all the projections just like globus paridus interna. Now the connections of the subthalamic nucleus. It will receive afferents directly from the cortex, from the thalamus, from the pallidum, mainly the globus pallidus externa and also from the brainstem. And it will give efferents to the globus pallidus interna. So these are called as the subthalamopallidal fibers. These as I told you earlier are the only excitatory glutaminergic intrinsic connections of the basal ganglia. It will also give efferents to substantia nigra, the striatum, the PPN and the ventral tegmentum. So as we can see in this diagram, there are three main parts of subthalamic nuclei. The pink one that we can see is actually the dorsolateral part which is concerned mainly with the motor territory. And 
ventromedial to that the blue territory which we can see is mainly the associative territory and medial to that the green territory that we can see is actually the limbic territory so important parts of subthalamic nuclei each territory will receive inputs from different areas of the cortices and will provide outputs to different areas which are called as the target nuclei and this target nuclei will include gpi gpe substantia nigra pars reticulata and the ventral pallidum as well so this input output interactions will provide for a parallel control of motor the oculomotor the cognitive as well as the emotional functions independently of the indirect pathway which is actually the uh, part of the striatopallidal pathway so subthalamic nuclei has a very important role to play in all of this motor oculomotor the cognitive and the emotional functions so it will have three types of neuronal discharges the most common majority ones are the irregular ones then is the tonic which is almost around 24% and the oscillatory is around 15% so these neurons responding to the movement were actually the irregular or the tonic type and these were found into the dorsolateral region of the subthalamic nuclei so if this uh, was the motor part then the oscillatory and the low frequency activity which was found in the other parts were actually not responding to the movement and which were found into the ventral part of the subthalamic nuclei which were mainly associated with association and dorsal lateral subthalamic nucleus is as i told you the motor area is the region which is of most interest in parkinson's disease because this is related to development of the main cardinal features of parkinson's disease hence this nucleus the dorsal lateral part of the subthalamic nucleus is the surgical target for parkinson's disease and lesioning of the abnormal activity in this dorsolateral part of the subthalamic nucleus while sparing the ventromedial part 